Hello. So this week I read Mary Walker Wears the Pants, the true story of the doctor, reformer, and Civil War hero. Um, it's written by Cheryl Harness, uh, illustrated by Carlo Molinari, um, published by Albert Whitman and Company. Copyright date is 2013. It is a biography that is 32 pages long and the appropriate age is approximately six to nine. Um, this, um, even though it was a, designed to be a shorter children's book, it really packed a lot of information um, into a small amount of pages, really. Um, and uh, it's about Mary Edwards Walker, and she was not like most women in the 1800s, and she often drew whispers and criticism because of this, and she wore pants to move more freely, which women didn't do because only men wore pants and women wore dresses and skirts back then. Um, she campaigned for equal civil rights for all men and women. Um, she went to medical school and in 1855 she became one of the first female physicians. Uh, she fought against slavery and in 1861 she went to Washington DC uh, to help as a volunteer for wounded soldiers by attending bandages, finding checkerboards, writing letters for them, and raising money for them. Um, she asked again and again to join the army um, as a surgeon and was always told no because she was a woman. Um, but then, you know, she didn't give up. Um, so then she went to the hospitals on the battlefields where she felt like she was needed. Um, and then some people saw her as an annoying camp follower. Um, but the war continued and that meant wounded and sick soldiers kept coming. So. She did her best to help everyone at the field hospitals from Fredericksburg, Virginia, all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, she fought for soldiers to keep her arms, uh, or to keep their arms and legs um, when she thought the amputations were unnecessary and gave men carrying stretchers great advice by telling them to um, carry the wounded soldiers with their heads um, higher than their feet. Um, finally, in 1863, her work became official when Major General George H. Thomas appointed her to serve as an assistant surgeon in the U.S. Army, um, which was a first for a woman. Uh, she tailored an officer's coat and trousers down to her size um, and completed this outfit with a, um, a jaunty hat. Um, she went on horseback to wherever she was needed, no matter who needed help. So whether it was civilians, um, you know, if bullets were flying or if it was behind enemy lines, she tried to help everyone. Um, because she went back and forth across enemy lines, um, many people thought she was a spy. And on April 10th, 1864, she was captured by a Confederate at gunpoint because he thought she was a spy. Um, she was put on a train and sent to Richmond, Virginia to join about a thousand other U.S. prisoners of war in Castle Thunder, which was a warehouse um, that had been turned into a prison. Um, on August 12th, 1864, she was set free as part of an exchange for another officer. And then she went to Louisville, Kentucky to look after female prisoners. And while there, she also campaigned for President Lincoln's 1864 re-election. Uh, then she went to Clarksville, Tennessee and cared for orphans, um, for war orphans, and then also celebrated the Union victory um, over the Southern Confederacy. And then in April 1865, the war was over. But then on April 15th, um, Mary mourned the death of President Lincoln. Um, and then on uh, July 4th, 1865, she celebrated Independence Day in Richmond, Virginia, and stood on the steps of the Capitol in her uniform and read the Declaration of Independence to everyone, regardless of race. Um, on January 24th, 1866, Mary got a letter from President Johnson informing her she was being uh, recognized for her valor and being given the Medal of Honor. She was the first woman to ever get this award or recognition. And after the war, people from America and around the world really paid to hear her tell her story in her famous pantsuit. Um, sometimes this caused problems, but in classic Mary fashion, um, she never gave up and she lived as she believed. Um, so one of the reasons that I chose this book um, was because uh, clearly it was a biography about someone very important, but 
I can't really say that I ever remembered learning about her. So um, I guess it kind of drew me to this book. Um, and I'm really glad I did choose this book because this person is a very important part of our country's history. And not just because she's a woman, but because she was brave, courageous, broke the mold, and she thought for herself. Um, which I think is such an important thing for children to see. Um, because we have so many role models now that aren't like that. Um, kids idolize other figures that are almost the opposite of that. Um, so I thought that that was um, uh, a great message for, for kids to, to learn about. Um, so I guess with that being said, um, even though she um, did all these things, and I, I had said that it wasn't just because she was a woman, she accomplished many firsts as a woman, which are equally as important. Um, this book teaches students about important events and history in a way most students can understand. Uh, and this book teaches students um, that, um, you know, boys and girls, that women play an important role in history and can do amazing things. And hopefully they'll also get the message that you can do anything if you set your mind to it um, and work hard regardless of whether you're a boy or a girl. Um, in addition to the great books or the great lessons that this book has, uh, I also feel that the illustrations do a wonderful job of helping to tell the story and give the students a great visual of of her as well as the time period, which I think is important because um, they might have a hard time visualizing, you know, what the 1800s was like. So I feel like this story, the artwork in it, does a great job of that um, and depicting her in her pantsuits and her uniform and the people around her and what they're wearing and what places looked like. Um, the illustrations did a fantastic job. Um, so for my strategy or activity, um, before reading the book, I would ask the students if they could explain to me what a biography was. Um, and then we'd go over some of the vocabulary in the book so that they can grasp the story better. Um, and then after the book, um, I knew I wanted to do an anchor chart with a picture of her and then have the kids tell me things about her and then... Um, you know, I would write those things down as they would tell tell those to me. But I couldn't quite piece together the things that I, in my head, like I couldn't quite put together what exactly I was wanting to do. Like I had bits and pieces, but I just couldn't, I don't know, I guess I just couldn't really get it together, I guess. Um, so I kind of, I went on the internet and I just searched biography ideas um, for kids. And I found two things that I really liked. Um... I found a graphic organizer uh, specifically for biographies that was, looked like it was for the right um, age range for grade school children, probably younger grade school children. Um, and it had everything in it that I, I was looking for, that I had in my head that I wanted them to be able to tell me about. Um, and then I have an example of that on um, my Word document. Um, but there's a place for them to write their name, the person we learned about, a space for her birth and death date, which um, I don't, I'm trying to think, I don't believe it said that in the book, so I would have to look that up for them and, and also um, tell that to them. But um, it has a space um, for the things that she's most, or the, yeah, the things she's most known for and a space um, for them to write five facts about her and a space for them to draw a picture of her. Um, and then I also found something else that I really liked and this could be um, like for older kids, um, like if the graphic organizer is too young for them, this could be something they could do instead. Um, and the younger kids could do this uh, as an addition to the graphic organizer. Um, they could use the graphic organizer more as like their template or their um, sort of their rough draft, I guess. Uh, but um, it was kind of it was kind of fun. You take um, like a poster board or a really big piece of like construction paper, and you would cut out a spot for their face to go through. Um, and then on the front, um, you 
you know, make their hair, their clothes, their body. You can draw it. You could, yeah, they can use other materials. Uh, I think the example I use, they, or I saw they used yarn for the hair, the construction paper for the body and the, you know, they can do whatever. Um, and then, uh, I guess it's just a way for them to be creative and come up with this. Um, but, um, and then around her face, they write the facts about her. Um, and, uh, they could do this in different colored markers. Um, they can do it as shown in the example with other pieces of paper. So like they had, um, different shapes of like construction paper cut out and they would write those facts on there and then they would glue them on. Um, and there's, you know, if they can come up with something else, they could do that too. So, um, anyway, that is my book this week and I thought it was really good. So I'll see you guys next time.